So number one, he was a citizen of the kingdom. Jesus had a kingdom mindset. He spoke the word of the kingdom, and he understood that it was the Father that dwelt in him that did the work. That is the kingdom process. Now, we will break that down. But first, I'm going to make that statement that I said I'd make to you. You ready? There should be a dual working going on all the time. By dual, I mean two. There should be two things that are operating simultaneously, in other words, parallel, in your life as you walk in those four principles that I just gave you. I'm going to say that one more time to make sure you get it. I'm not sure if I was clear enough. While you're walking in those four principles that I gave you, and while we're learning it, we're going to be praying about it, we're going to be confessing it, we're going to be studying it, we're going to ask God to give us more insight into that. And as we develop in it, we should be operating in two dual principles. There should be two things operating at all times on our minds and in our spirits. We should be walking in this. And I'm going to give them to you. Ready? Write these down. One is called the kingdom agenda. And it, it may sound strange to you. Folks, I told you I got this last night early into the morning. I didn't make none of this up. I didn't find it in a book, no TV, no video, nothing. It came up in my spirit. I didn't make these words and phrases up myself. They're not catchphrases. I'm not trying to be deep. I got it from the Holy Ghost. So you know this is real. Please write it down. The kingdom agenda. And the second is the kingdom flow. Now, he's going to have to help us with that as we go on the next couple of weeks, as we, as we pray about this and study it. Let God reveal it to us. The kingdom agenda and the kingdom flow. Let me tell you what the kingdom agenda is. The kingdom agenda. Are you ready? You already know what it is. I'm just going to remind you. Seeking and saving that which was lost. That's on God's agenda. Isn't that great? When you think about an agenda means this is the list of things that I have to do. This is my plan. This is what's on my itinerary. This is the motive, the reason why I do what I do. This is what, this is what I have marked out on my schedule. It's my agenda. God's talking to you this morning. He says, number one, to seek and to save that which was lost. Are you getting this? Folks, never forget when it comes to the kingdom agenda. God loves people. I said that last week, and it's nothing but the God's honest truth. God loves people, and God cares about people. Did you get that? He loves people, and he cares about people. John 3, 16 bears that out, Big Brother George, when it says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's where God's heart is, folks. That's his agenda. You ever notice when people do things for you, in the back of your mind you'll be asking, I wonder what they want. See, did, don't, did that ever happen to you? So ask God, wait a minute, you gave me your only begotten son. Well, what do you want? What, what is it you want from me? Why would you give me your best? Watch this, folks, because he loves you. That's his agenda. See, that's on his plan, his list of things to do is to save your soul. Glory to God. That's what he wants. He wants you saved. See, and Romans 5 and 8 bears that out when it says, But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, I was in the crack house. I, I was breaking into folks' houses. Folks, I used to rob churches, and God demonstrated his love towards me. That even while I was a thief, while I was a crackhead, while I was lying and shacking up and whoremongering, while I was out there in the street, big brother, glory to God, Christ died for me. He gave me his best when I was in my mouth. So God displayed his power. He displayed his love when he gave me Jesus. And when he raised him from the dead on the third day, it was an awesome display of his love and an awesome display of his power. And now, the next thing on God's list, the next thing on his agenda is to mobilize the church, the body of Christ, to get the gospel to the nations. Can you see that? That's the kingdom agenda. So while you're confessing and walking in the light of the fact that you're a child of the kingdom, 
while you're developing your kingdom mindset, while you're speaking the word of the kingdom, while you're acknowledging that it's not about you, the Father that dwells in you, He's doing the works, always keep on your mind the kingdom agenda. That God loves people. God cares about people. He gave them Jesus, and He wants them to get this glorious gospel. That should ever be on every believer's mind. That should always be at the forefront. The reason why I'm getting this gospel out. There's more to this than just a shout on Sunday morning. Are you listening to me? This is more than just jumping around the church and running around circle. Go praise God for giving him praise and glory. But don't you ever get it twisted. The priority is to seek and to save that which was lost. Are you listening to me? Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 through 19. Would you please turn to that? Would you please turn to that? I'm, gonna, I'm still dealing with the kingdom agenda. I'm going to take my time. I told you this is going to take several weeks. There's no point in rushing this. When God gave me this early this morning, he was serious about it. Matter of fact, I don't mind telling you. And you preachers know I'm telling the truth. As I was writing this stuff down, I was getting ready to add something, and I got this check in my spirit like, no. You put down what I just said to put down. I, this is nothing but the God's honest truth. And some of you preachers know what I'm talking about. I was getting ready to add something, and it was like I got this check. Like, nope. You say it just the way I gave it to you. That right there. So that's what I'm giving you. Okay, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 19. Now, I want you to read these scriptures in the light of what we're talking about. Don't read it religiously. You go to a church and you start quoting 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Everybody starts to shout and run. And be, just sit down. Just sit down for a minute. And listen to the scriptures in light of what we're talking about. We're talking about kingdom process, kingdom principles, kingdom mindset, God's agenda, what God, what's on God's mind. We're not talking about shouting right now. What is God thinking about, folks? Souls are on their way to hell while you're shouting. Yeah, see, see how serious it is? So sit down just for a moment and listen to me. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, a new creation, a new species of being that never existed before. And the Bible says, all the old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, here's a part I want to get in. You're saved now, right? That's what that scripture said. Now, watch this. All things are of God who has reconciled us to himself. Let me define the word reconcile. It's not a deep word. Let's take it apart. The prefix re, R-E, just simply means to go back. What does consile mean? To make one again. To be at peace. How about when you uh, reconcile your bills, when you conciliate your bills? What does that mean? Oh, we're taking all these payments and we're just making one. So God is saying, I want you to come back to being one with me. Can you see that? We're in Christ now. He says, you're back in one with me. We're in fellowship again. And now look what he goes on to say. And he has given us, those people that he already reconciled, the church, He's given us the ministry of reconciliation. Well, what is that, Lord? Well, the next verse goes on to tell you. God was in Christ reconciling or making the world one with him again. In other words, this is bigger than you, baby. Yeah, this is bigger than you. You're in Christ, great. You've been reconciled to the Father. You're made one with him again. But now he's saying, oh, now I'm committing to you the word or the message of reconciliation. I need you to go tell people what I did for you. Tell them what my son Jesus did for them. Tell them I'm not imputing their trespasses against them anymore. Tell them I love them. Go take this gospel and give it to them. The same gospel that I gave to you. Can you see that? That's God's agenda. And that needs to be ever on your mind. As you are operating in these kingdom principles we're going to be talking about in the next few weeks. Always remember, this should be running parallel with your thoughts at all times. That God loves the world. He wants me to get the gospel to them. So as I'm walking around confessing and acknowledging that I'm a citizen of the kingdom, I'm an ambassador for Christ, developing my kingdom mindset, being renewed in the spirit of my mind, speaking the word of the kingdom, not trying to take the glory for it, acknowledging that it's the Father that dwells in me, He's doing the works. It's not by power, it's not by might, it's by the Spirit of the Lord. And as I'm doing that, I'm recognizing God loves that woman. 
God loves that man over there. God loves that bus driver. God loves that guy. Yeah, he loved the black one, the white one, the Italian one, the Asian one. Yeah, God loves the Chinese. Yes, God loves them. God wants to help them. See? You see how that's dominating my mindset now? How I'm being controlled by another force, another power, and a higher level. I'm no longer natural. I'm not thinking this life matters or that life matters. I'm not thinking down here anymore. I'm thinking heavenly. I'm on a worldwide mission and vision for God, reconciling the world back to him. Can you see that? And then the second rule that should run parallel with that is the kingdom flow. And I'm going to start this and end it shortly. I don't want to get any, go any further than this. The kingdom flow. I already gave you the kingdom agenda. That God seeks and saves that which is lost. He's concerned about people. That's what's on God's mind always. People. The kingdom flow was found in Matthew 9, 36. We just read it. The Bible says when Jesus saw the multitudes, he was, here we go, moved with compassion on them. Let's focus on that word moved. We had a lot of winds here in the D.C. metropolitan area lately. You saw the, you saw the, the leaves and the trash and everything going with the wind. The wind was blowing it all over. Listen, the trash wasn't blowing by itself. The leaves weren't blowing by themselves. People's umbrellas off their back porches didn't blow around on their own. The wind did it. They were, watch this, moved with the wind. Well, Jesus, watch this, was moved with compassion. Can you see that? Is this tissue moving by itself that I'm blowing on? No. It's moving because I'm blowing on it. See, Jesus was moving with compassion. In other words, God is love. God was moving. And Jesus got in the flow with him and began to move with him. Because God saw all those people fainting, sheep without a shepherd, and he wanted to help them. So he worked through Jesus. Remember, the Father did the work. He said, Jesus, move with me. Let's go help these folk over here. Let's go, oh God, let's go help them. Move with me. That's the kingdom flow. See, he flowed with compassion. Love was his motivation. Compassion moved him. Never forget, folks, that the Lord is gracious and full of compassion. It is his will to heal and to help people. Our job as the body of Christ is to move with him. Move with him. You see how the paper's moving? God wants us to move with him. It's just like the current in the sea. It's already moving. We just need to get in it and flow with it. So God's moving in compassion. He sees people hurting. He sees people fainting. He sees people giving up, distressed, despondent, depressed, unsafe, sick in their body, broke, broken relationships. And he wants to help them. And he's going to do it through you. Are you getting this? He was moved with compassion. I'm not going to go any further than that today. I will quickly review. We're talking about the kingdom process. We discussed already that process means a series of actions, not one thing but several things. I gave you four things. One, I'm a citizen of the kingdom. Two, I will develop a kingdom mindset. Three, I will speak the word of the kingdom. And four, the Father in me will do the work. That's the process. While we're doing that, we talked about two dual things that should be operating all the time. One is the kingdom agenda. The other is the kingdom flow. The kingdom agenda is to seek and to save that which was lost. That's the kingdom agenda. God loves people. He cares about people. The kingdom flow is for us to move with love and compassion, flow with it, so that we can help people. Did you get that? Have you ever made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life? That's what this broadcast is all about. I teach a lot to help God's people and to nurture them up. But there are some people listening today, you never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. Or you're in a backslidden state. You know good and well you're not on your way to heaven. I have some good news for you today. God loves you. Yes, he does love you. He knows what you did last night. He knows what you did this morning. You think that you've gone too far. I have some good news for you today. The blood of Jesus will never lose its power. The blood of Jesus reaches to the highest mountain and flows to the lowest valley. And you can be saved today. Say this simple prayer. Say, God, I believe the gospel that was preached today. I believe Jesus bore my sin in his own body on the tree that he went to hell in my place. On the third day you raised him from the dead. And I confess that Jesus is Lord. 
You've been listening to the Kingdom Seekers radio broadcast. I'm Dr. Garen Gatling. I'll be back again.